One day I was preaching in Fresno years ago. And uh, we were having a revival in a church. And God was moving so mightily that young people were getting saved in very large numbers. And as the revival went on, the, the time of our starting kept getting earlier and earlier and earlier, like this one is. And so one day the pastor uh, comes to the office. He's a, he was a great man. He came to the office and he said, you know, there's an there's a elder from a, a mainstream church, a historical church. They said, I go to a historical church. That means the presence of God there is history. And uh, and so he uh, he tells me there's an elder from this mainline church that is here to expose you, and he's going to take notes. One well, was hard; it wasn't hard to pick him out. He was the only one in a suit, and the entire church is filled with young people. And so I walk out, and you know, I'm sweet. My, my wife said I was the sweetest man in the world. She told me that. We were in the kitchen when it happened. And she looked at me and said, you are the sweetest man in the world. And then her voice drifted off, she said. And she spoke those things that were not as if they were. She was confessing it. So I got out there and I looked at this boy and I said, I'm gonna, I said, sir, you know what makes me angry is that your rear end is filling a seat that a homeless teenager might have been in and a prostitute might have been in. Do you know that the church chair and the crusade chair is the most expensive and beautiful piece of furniture on earth? Because you see, if you're in a hospital bed as opposed to that chair, in this chair, you could be healed. Now, this is a better chair than the counseling center down at the drug rehab. Because instead of getting off of alcohol in 12 steps, you can get off in one step. You're not helping me enough. And you see, the power of church furniture. One day, I was on the team with David Wilkerson. And I have a wonderful friend here, Evangelist Scott Hinkle, a great man of God. This man right here has led the number one outreach on in Mardi Gras in New Orleans for over 30 years. That man right there. He's taken tens of thousands to New Orleans. Stand up, brother. Give, him, give Scott Hinkle a great big hand right there. He's a man of God. Thank you, brother. I said, what compares to the seat you're sitting in? Nothing. A psychiatrist's couch? Why would you spend $250 an hour to get advice from somebody who might be crazier than you are? <laughs> Just saying. But now, somebody else like that one. All right, so, here you are. And the feast that you thought life passed you by. You thought the goodness was for somebody else. The peace was for somebody else. The happiness was for somebody else. Somebody's walking up to you right now and saying, I know you think the banquet passed you by, but we've got a seat at the table, and it's time. It's time. Bow your heads. Close your eyes, everyone, please. Someone asked me why my altar calls are the way they are. I'm going to talk to you for a moment. I told him one day I read this chapter about the banquet, and the way it ended is this. 
When they came back after the first round, the Bible says that the seats were still not full. So he said, I want you to go into the marginalized parts of society, the highways and the hedges. And then he used the word compel them to come in. So I looked it up, and everybody listen carefully and stand still right where you are. Because somebody next to you may be ready to get saved from hell. And if you make this moment look casual, the enemy will use that on them. Compel means the highest level of asking someone to do something. You wake up one morning and your phone shows an amber alert and it shows you the picture of a young girl. By coincidence, later that day you're in a park and that little girl is on a swing by herself. Her kidnapper isn't around. He's left her for a moment. You don't know how long. Here's what the average evangelist would do. Wouldn't you like to think about going home I know that what I'm saying might be offending you. So I'm going to tell you, consider coming home from the kidnapper. Another might say, you know, it's wrong for you to be alone in a park. I don't know what's wrong with you that you're alone in a park. But here's what Mario Murillo does. Get in the car. You're going to the police station right now. No. No. Little girl, look at me. I'm not like that other person. I'm someone else. I'm not like that other preacher you heard. I'm someone else. I'm not like that other voice you heard. I'm someone else. And there is no way on the world that I'm going to let you go without putting up a fight for your salvation and your deliverance. You believe that? The eyes closed. How can I believe there's a hell? And a devil. How can I believe that you're in danger? How can I believe that Christ is the only way you'll be saved? And it won't be through meditation. And it won't be through a change of diet. It won't come that way. It only comes through Christ. Your problem is not bad thinking. You're under the control of evil. Because the Bible says there's only one way to get the devil off of someone's back. And that's when they resist him. And they turn to Christ. Now, in a moment, I'm going to ask you to put your hand in the air. And when you put your hand in the air, here's what you're saying. I'm going to eat at the banquet table of a God who loves me. Number two, I am saying goodbye to the devil and to the prison and the pain. Last night, there was a young man standing outside of this tent. He was in mortal danger, and we don't need to say anything more. His life is hanging in the balance for reasons that we will not get into. And he's crying, and the conviction of God is all over him. He didn't realize that what was waiting for him under this tent wasn't just the spiritual salvation of Christ, but a network that we had to send him to safety. And we did. Now, he was remarkably saved, dramatically saved. He took the risk and a step forward. What is it that you think is better than raising your hand for Christ? What is it? Who is it? What could it possibly be that you could think right now is better than giving your life to Christ. Who will love you like this? Who will arrange your life like this? Who will give you what you were born to have like this? No. What pill, what person, what what counsel will you ever receive that will quell the fear of your heart the way the love of God is going to do it in just a moment? And who's going to tell you how to forgive yourself more than God who will wipe out The guilt and the shame. There is no turning down this gift. 
There's none that will tell me they know something better than what they're about to be offered. Say, Mara, it'll cost me friends. It's worth it. It'll cost me my reputation. It's worth it. It'll cost me some, some comfort, but it's worth it. And what do you want me to do, man of God? I get ready to put your hand in the air. Wherever you are right now, say, Mario, I want the life I was born to have. I want the peace that only Christ could give. I want the power to know that the devil and his power is not only broken off of me, but that the ownership of my soul is being transferred from darkness to Christ. And I'm his forever. Now you can leave your hand down and you can believe it's for someone else. And I'm going to tell you the worst drug under this tent is I go to church, therefore I'm saved. That's worse than crack cocaine. It's worse than heroin. It is the most lethal drug there is. Because, because Satan is hoping against hope that you will never confront the truth of where you are before God. Now, if you are here and you need peace, power, transformation, you need hope for the future and the sense that you are connected to a God who will never leave you or forsake you, I want you to let me pray for you. I want you to say it in your soul, not out loud. Say it in your soul. Man of God, I want you to pray for me because you have no idea how much my life hurts. And if there's really proof that Christ will make all the difference in what I'm feeling right now, then I'm willing to surrender everything. I'm willing to do it. Pray for me, Mario. Pray for me. Pray that I will turn from my dark days to the days of joy and peace that are waiting for me. I want a new life. I want what you're talking about. Let me pray for you. Put your hand in the air. If that's you, get your hand up right now. I saw you almost put your hand up. I can't fathom why you would not go all the way. Put your hand up right now. You see that pull right now? Long before you got to this tent, a voice was telling you, it's Jesus, it's Jesus, it's Jesus. Even when you were an atheist, the voice was telling you, it's in Christ. It's in Christ that you'll find the answer. Raise your hand right now. If you haven't already, join these that have. I want everyone who has got their hand in the air, no matter how far from this tent you are, I want you to stand up on your feet right now. Get up. If your hand is raised, stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Remain standing right where you are because I'm not going to let the others get away. You wonder why these people clapped so loud when, they stood, when you stood up? You want to know why they did? Because they know how you're going to feel in a few minutes. They know. Everyone, remain. Every one of you that are standing, stay on your feet. The rest, close your eyes. If you're under this tent and you did not stand up, I'm going to go after you anyway. Because I want you to not leave. This is the story of your life. Promises you've made. Moments where you came so close to changing the, the vicious cycle and being that person you always wanted to be. So now I'm going to send in the reinforcements. Not only the Holy Spirit, but your friends and family. Wherever you are right now, if you brought someone tonight, they're, sta they're seated next to you. This is the moment where you gently lean over and say, if I stand up, will you stand with me for Christ? Because I know what this miracle is going to do for you. Would you stand up if I stand right next to you? Now, these brave and wonderful people stood up by themselves. But that doesn't make you any less. 
you're still a soul that Christ died for. So now, wherever you are, lean over. Be the, the hand and the voice of God extended. And say to them, would you stand up now and receive Christ? And get them to stand up. If somebody asks you, it's the best offer they ever made. You look at they're standing up. Over here, over there, over there, over there. They're getting up out of their seat. And now, find the nearest aisle and walk to the front where I can pray for you. Come. Come from over here. Come from over here. You're coming to Jesus. This is the most amazing thing you will ever see, Modesto. Fill in the front. To God be the glory. Workers, help them fill in. Help them to fill in right now. Come right around. We're waiting on all of you right now. Thank you. Come forward a little bit. Fill in right behind. Well, I think you need to clap some more. This is just amazing. All the way around there. Make sure they get all the way around. So they can come down the aisle. They're still coming. They're just getting here from almost to the parking lot. I'm just waiting. Bow your head and close your eyes, all of you that have walked to the front. I want to give you the biggest reason in the world why what you're about to do is going to work. If you're sitting there wondering if this is going to be one of a hundred attempts to be a better person, this is not that. See, every leaf you tried to turn over, every attempt to improve yourself, and rehabilitate yourself came from your own will. This one is God. God is starting this project. And one day, Paul said to the Philippians, He who began a good work in you will complete it to the day of Jesus Christ. So here's what you're going to say, and it's going to give you peace to say it. Put your hand over your heart. It'll give you peace to say this. I'm never going back to what I was before. I'm not going back to the darkness, the pain, the confusion, and the despair. I'm going forward. And there's a great power of love taking over my life. I want you to say this after me. And mean it from your heart. I see you on the cross. Lord Jesus. Dying for me. A horrible death. When you died for me. It proved that you loved me. That you would never leave me. That you would never reject me. It proved it. Forever. On the third day. You rose from the dead. And you proved that you had the power to break any addiction, to break any emotion, any relationship, any act of the devil that he would try to do. You are greater and you will protect me. That is why I'm yours now. All of me. Totally, with no conditions, 
I hold nothing back. I belong to Jesus and no one else. Thank you, Jesus, that I'm not going to hell. That my name is in your book. And when I die, you will call me and I will live with you forever. Now, hold your applause, ladies and gentlemen. Would all of you that are standing here before me, if you meant every word that you just prayed, let me see your hand. You meant it. Because you meant it. Because you meant it. You put your hand down. The seed of the gospel went into good soil. You're going to grow. And to, to give you a fast track to being a disciple of Jesus, I have handpicked some wonderful friends you're about to meet over here. They're going to need five minutes of your born-again new life. And they're going to take some information because there are wonderful churches that are waiting to get to know you. And we want them to know you. And they're going to help you. So if you would all turn this way and don't worry. You are all that we are concerned about right now in this meeting. Nothing else is more important. Every one of you turn this way and workers guide them in. Guide them in. Now. You better jump on your feet and welcome your new brothers and sisters into the family of God. Let's get them, Let's get them all. How many of you are excited for what they've done?